We want the re Ryzen DRAM calculator. It doesn't matter if you have an Intel processor, we're not playing around with the DRAM calculator. We're playing around with the mem test section where it tests your memory to make sure there are no errors. You can actually overclock your memory in two different ways, the frequency or the timings. The frequency is not guaranteed to be stable. Certain CPUs have limitations and that is where you're gonna find all of a sudden things go slower. And I'm gonna show that in this video. Now let's get started. Hello, this is Eric Nabaus and welcome to my memory overclocking slash tweaking guide. This is not going to get into great detail because one thing I need you to know is everything in this guide is going to be about safety, running within safe margins. And there are times if you're actually pushing things that you'll get to a blank black screen that you'd be stuck there unless you know how to reset your CMOS. So your CMOS is your BIOS, CPU ID, which is actually CPU Z. So let's click here. And then of course you're going to go to whatever language you have, it's English or Chinese. And then of course I accept the agreement and I'm going to install it. Oh, and I have it open right here. Anyways, I already have it installed. So right now I can see all my information here. And if I go to motherboard, I can see my motherboard and this can allow me to find the BIOS. Then if I look here, I can see my memory timings right now. I actually have it overclocked a bit, just slightly but a cast latency I've turned down a bit. So here's my XMP. And of course, XMP, if you look right here, it's horrible. But I have my memory timing here much lower because I can. Talk about different motherboards, on my ASRock B350 and my ASRock B450, the reset jumper pin was just underneath the GPU slot. If it doesn't have jumper pins, there's also the option to remove the battery, put the battery back in or take the jumper off after I've done that. DRAM calculator for Ryzen. Doesn't matter if you don't have a Ryzen, you have Intel. What we want to use is a part called Membench. Okay, so I have DRAM calculator for Ryzen already installed. So I'm gonna run the application here. I'm gonna to totally ignore this. What I want to go to is Membench. Do not boost voltages too high. Memory controllers and modern CPUs are actually built into the CPU and then we'll have a nightmare of a time. So let's see what our baseline score is right here when it's done. So for this particular memory, our time here is 136.3. Do not pay attention to best time. Okay, now we want to reboot into our BIOS. To go into the BIOS, we're going to let the computer start rebooting and when it goes to a blank screen, what we're going to do is go to our keyboard right here and we're going to start pressing delete or F1. In my particular case, it's the delete key. And now it's actually blank screen. So now I want to start pressing that key. And of course, I don't know when it's actually at that point, but that's what I need to press. And there we go. Now I'm at that BIOS here. And from the BIOS, this is where we can overclock. Everyone's BIOS is different, so keep that in mind. And the easiest way to overclock is changing this DRAM frequency. I have a Ryzen 5000 processor and generally the Infinity Fabric, that's the memory controller. The highest it goes is 3600, then it goes to a half speed kind of idea. So generally doing this will slow my computer down. In most cases it will speed up your computer if you don't have your memory as high as it can go. This is something I'm going to try and let's see if it even boots. If it doesn't boot, I'm going to have to reset the BIOS. And this does happen where you just get a complete failure. It's not fun. The DRAM calculator every single time, if it passes the test, and I recommend three times to try it, just to ensure stability, especially when, um, okay, good, this is booting so far. You can see everything's still loading. It's gonna take a moment to start up the test. And I should be able to exceed the score that I had previously, which is 136 if this worked. In some cases, you actually may have memory that is set to a uh, super high speed, but your motherboard can't do it. You lower the speed to gain stability, then you can play the timings. And the more you lower the actual speed of the chip, the memory, 
the more you can lower your timings to gain all your speed back. So that's a bonus. So our time here is much worse. You want it to go down. So we, I did exceed the memory limit, the infinity fabric of the AMD. And of course, Intel might have a limit as well. Again, it'll be based on the motherboard, based on the CPU. And yeah, we're gonna have to actually lower that back down to 3600 from 3666. You can see it was actually faster not to overclock their frequency. And some people get obsessed with, I need to overclock for the most speed. No, you don't always need to. Sometimes the timing, which decreases delays, is actually the better way to go. And since that didn't work out properly, the next step I'm gonna do is my timings. And I've actually tried cast latency. This memory fails to overclock at all in the cast latency already. So I'm gonna change what I know in this particular case. You may wanna just change a bunch of steps one down at a time and uh, test each single one. However, you can try a bunch at a time, just lowering one and then see if it succeeds. Testing three times with that uh, Ryzen tester. And I'm gonna actually lower this TRC because I should be able to do cast latency plus TRAS as the lowest timing, but I'm gonna go 64 just for stability's sake to make sure everything else is good. So I'm actually loading into Windows just fine, perfect. So if it stays blank, you might wanna wait a bit because it may, your computer may do memory training and just downclock the setting automatically, but it may just fail completely. This is where things get very slow and tedious. So we can see we exceeded our last score. So let's say if I were to run this without an error, I could jump to the next state and just lower it down some more. However, I won't know what point I started getting errors if I skip testing at least three times. So we can see I successfully passed the test again, zero errors, lower time than default. And if you forget to write down your timings, they're right here. So the timings were changing, as you can see on this graph, are, is right here, the cast latency, this one, this one, this one, TRAS, only if you choose to try changing that. Turn that's pretty, pretty well tuned on most memories, but you could try it. It's just I wouldn't play around as much with that one. The TRC, this is of course the one that's cast latency plus TRAS equals your TRC. That's the lowest it can actually go. I usually just put a little bit higher that number just to make sure I have absolute stability. Now that we're stable, I could try some lower timings. In my case, I'm not playing with the cat latency, the CL, because I know it automatically fails if I touch that whatsoever on this particular memory. So there's absolutely zero point. I could change one at a time. That's normally what I recommend. I'm just changing this all one shot to actually do a faster testing for myself, but it's not what I recommend, but it's faster. And of course, if it fails, it's gonna be one of those timings or all of them that just failed. And if that's reset, this could be a lot of work. And right now we are not having success. Right now we have that yellow light on my screen and it's not booting. So in the case of AMD Ryzen motherboards, generally it takes a while to reboot again because it has to retrain the CPU or it might not go anywhere at all and you might have to hard power it off again the second time. That's where it gets frustrating to play around with memory overclocking, especially when you're pushing the limits. You're gonna have to go back through all your steps again to overclock. And in my case, usually I just set XMP first or DCOP, depending on what your motherboard is. Then reboot again. Then set my timings again. And this means all settings I chose, including my CPU to run at a lower temperature, is all reset. In my case, I do my curve optimizer. I change this to negative voltage, so it actually runs at a lower voltage and boosts my CPU performance more. So I run at lower power and I get uh, better performance. DDR4, default non-overclock voltage is 1.2. I can run this to 1.35, not a problem, even with the cheaper memory. Shouldn't be any issue. You could go 1.4 to make sure of stability or 1.45 at most is what I recommend. Don't, please don't go any higher. I don't want anyone ruining their computer chips. That's 18 plus 42, 50, 
60. Okay, well, I can change this to 60. And I'll change that to 60. And this should work. And generally, I should be able to change this TRFC1. And I don't know what the best time I can get is. I'm going to change it to 891. Just for giggles and see how this works out. So we're almost done the calculations and the time looks like it's going to be a new record. There we go. Awesome. 131.55. This overclock I did, that's actually stable. I did without increasing any voltage whatsoever. And that's the best way to go. When you start increasing voltage, you start risking heat to your CPU, especially if your CPU is running hot already, it's going to get worse. There are other voltages you can increase to increase your overclock, especially in extreme overclocking, but I don't want to go over this and I'm not into extreme overclocking. In fact, I'm pretty much against it, but you do what you do. When it comes to memory overclocking, there's no quick and easy solution. It's all trial and error. The fastest way is simply to choose a faster speed. And of course, memory timing is a lot slower process. But if you balance between your speed and your clock rates, you can get quite a bit more performance, especially in gaming if your graphics card can handle the extra speed. Don't clover clock your memory voltage too high or else you're risking your CPU. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.